Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for a specialty application of PowerMill and PowerShape, the electrode solution. My name is Rob Kobielski, hosting today's event, and I'm joined by two very familiar faces to the power solution stage. As many of you may already know, Mike Belanger has been the go-to engineer for the Autodesk's electrode solution for quite a few years now. He's gonna be leading the technical presentation that's gonna be starting in a few short minutes. Our moderator on today's call probably needs no introduction either. He is certainly one of the Goliaths of Power Mill North America. Let us welcome Aaron Kennedy of Autodesk to the call. Thanks, Rob. I'm excited to be here with our partner, AMS360, to present the Electrode Solution. This will help customers automate their EDM department and save valuable time in an industry where efficiency is key today. We'll be here to answer any of your questions after the webinar, so please feel free to add them to the chat panel, or sorry, the question panel. Uh, back to Rob. Very good. Thank you, Aaron. I'd venture a guess that Mike and Aaron have probably connected with most users through the Knowledge Network, trade show, visits, or otherwise. So certainly they are a great resource and we're happy to have them with us today. So now on to today's topic. Autodesk Electrode Solution is a means of extracting, programming, and inspecting your electrodes in a single package. If you've been frustrated with your current process due to software fragmentation and overcoming, pardon me, and overcoming hurdles borne by data translation between multiple platforms, then you know we may find some relief for you today. By centralizing the design and programming into a single file, you could avoid redundant data input and avoid manually entering information into your EDM controller. This can be automated with a script file generated from the electrode solution. Now imagine removing the worry of a misstep on the controller, especially when you're at the EDM stage and a mistake would be very costly. So this is certainly something that we can mitigate with our solution. A quick reminder, just before we get going, uh, microphones will remain muted throughout the duration of this presentation, but your feedback is appreciated. Please key your questions uh, to us using the webinar panel on the side of your screen. I'd also like to note that the audio connection seems to work best through your computer. So if you're connected by phone and experience an issue, please let us know and we can provide a recording of today's demonstration. So without further ado, I'd like to pass on the presentation over to Mike. Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at how to create electrodes with PowerShape and then move into the manufacturing process using PowerMill. I'm going to start out by showing how to pull a simple electrode using just the PowerShape electrode wizard. After that, I will show you two different methods of creating a more complex electrode that utilizes PowerShape's direct modeling and editing tools. Once I have created those three electrodes, we will have a look at the script file generated from PowerShape that will drive your EDM syncer machine. At that point, I will transition over to PowerMill to show you how Autodesk has automation built into the software that can streamline your programming process and get you NC code quickly for the machines that will be producing these electrodes. So let's get started. So the first method of creation will be using the PowerShape electrode wizard. And within the wizard, there are some very easy to use tools to identify the regions that need to be burned. There are also some options to create extension distances and clearance distances in order to get the right, right style of trode for what you need. The next page is going to define a blank. Now this blank can be populated with your custom sizes or you can use the ones that are preloaded in the library already. But for today, I am going to define it manually with some numbers that I have right here. You can see quite easily modified and changed. Next, we're gonna look at what kind of holder we want attached for this electrode. It comes again preloaded with a couple of different libraries. I will choose Eroa. And attach the holder there. There's also a little simulation tool 
just so you can check the electrode to be sure that it's clearing any of the surrounding areas. The next page allows you to give it your personal um, naming convention or definition. Also, you can add what level you would like it added to in PowerShape and some options to put details in for the setup sheets. After that, we can use this page to create the undersize and also choose a workpiece material as well as the undersize data set that comes preloaded into PowerShape. The last page will ask me for an export to PowerMill, which is going to create the CAM file that I need in order to load into PowerMill, as well as the EDM data transfer files, which is that script that I mentioned earlier. You can see it pre comes preloaded with some uh, options here from different manufacturers. But for today, I will be using the OPS Ingersoll script. You're going to save it into a folder of your choice and then hit finish. Once it's finished, you're going to see some detail along the left hand side, as well as the setup sheets that get created for you automatically. These setup sheets will give you the actual burn location and stock size that you need for the raw material. And there actually is a few different setup sheets that do get created if you want to print them out. So that is our first electrode. Fairly easy and quick to get through. Also worth noting here that if you notice at the bottom, we have a level 100 and 101. The electrode is placed onto level 100 and the holder onto level 101. I will create the next electrode using a more manual method called core from selection. So in order to use this method, we actually need to select the area that defines the burn region. We can do that using some of the power shape uh, selection tools. I'm going to use concave. And it quickly and easily selects all of the faces inside those regions. Once I have those regions selected, I can jump into my core from selection. When you choose core from selection, it defines a box around what you have selected, which can be easily modified either using these uh, drag handles or manually typing in the number that you want right there. I'm going to give myself some more height here in order to produce a little more, little more of a base for this electrode. So there we go. We have a separate solid created with an impression of that detail. And I will blank everything else so I'm only looking at this piece. So this is where the direct modeling and solid editing comes into play. So the power shape solid modeling or direct modeling tools are very handy, easy to use. As you can see, I have two separate faces here and I'm going to use the replace face tool in order to join them together. And then I'm gonna use the same tool in order to eliminate this whole standing area that's unnecessary. After that, I can create an, an extension or an offset with the face I have selected here and either, again, drag with this arrow or define in this box the actual distance that I want. Hit the green check mark, the model updates, and I move on to my next edit. So for these floor areas, 
I do want them cleared because obviously that's not an area that needs to be cut. So I'll go back to that offset function that I just used. And with those faces selected, I will drag this down approximately 100 thou. I see the preview. I hit the green check mark to accept the changes there. Updates the model and everything looks good. One last change that I will make is from the solid tab is creating a fillet around the bottom where these sharp corners are. This is gonna help with the machining process as well as adding a bit of strength to this model. So by choosing those three corners, I can quickly and easily add fillets into this workpiece. I will unblank the, the, the main workpiece and do a quick interrogation to make sure that everything clears all of the other model. At that point, I go right back into my PowerShape electrode wizard. It jumps me a couple of pages forward because it doesn't need any of the creation method because of what we've done already. It brings me right to the blank page. and jump over to the holders. Now, these holders you can see come preloaded with um, Eroa, Hirschman, and System 3R electrode holders, but this as well is fully customizable. If you have your own CAD data with your own holders, this can be populated with your personalized components. Quick check to make sure Everything clears and is safe. And move along. For this one, I will not bother creating a secondary, a semi finish and a finished road. I'm only going to have the finished size. And there we go, the second ele electrode has been produced. Again, with the details along the left hand side and all of my setup sheets that are in the view tab, if you would like them. I have my level 200 and 100, which house my electrodes, as well as 101 with the holders housed on there. So the last method of creating an electrode is going to be actually using a piece of wireframe. As you can see, I have one created here already, but it can be any shape that you choose. I have chosen to create this square area around the top feature. And by selecting that piece of wireframe, I can go right back to my solid tab and choose core from wireframe. There we go. So it's created that separate solid with the impression of the detail underneath of it. And I will blank the rest of the model. In this example, I'm going to choose these floor faces that need to be cleared back and do a simple edit in order to move them back a distance of my choice. And as you can see, it does that move of the face. It does not keep the draft angle along these walls like the offset did in the previous solution. So there are two different options there for you, whatever one works best. Next, I'm gonna choose these floors again. And with the replace face, choose that bottom. Now I don't wanna cut this off completely. So I will give it an offset. Now the whole point of this is it takes the shape of this bottom face but then offsets it, offsets it back this amount. 
just like that. I will go back into my solid the tab, give myself some fillets along the bottom there for strength and close this out. Lastly, I'm going to choose move and give this face a little extra extension. And the model's updated. Okay, at this point, you can unblank the rest of the model. And using the same process as before, run through that electrode wizard. Another option here to note is that if you need the electrode holder off center, there is a position dialog where you can offset that, whether for, for whatever reason it may be, whether you're up against a wall or for whatever reason you need. There's also an option to rotate the holder if you need it situated in a different spot, 90 degrees. We can add our name, change our level, any details you need on the setup sheets. And then export, ensuring that we are exporting for PowerMill, getting the script file, and finish. There we go. So now we have three electrodes created. All three are done, ready to go. Script file created. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And we are ready for the manufacturing process. Before we get to the manufacturing process, let's have a look at that script file quickly. If I open up the folder where I'm saving all of my files, we're going to see the electrode data.trode file, which is the file that we're, we're going to use bringing into PowerMill. But we're also going to see this .ing file. That is what our script is. If I open that up, I'm going to see all of the burn locations as well as burn settings for each electrode, as you can see right there. These are um, editable, so if it doesn't quite fit your machine, we can make modifications for it to fit the settings that you need. Transitioning over to PowerMill, you will have to do a little bit of setup the first time around, and that includes going into the um, plugin manager, ensuring that the electrode wizard is enabled, and you can enable it. If it is uh, toggled to red, you can simply enable it by clicking that button. Mine is already enabled. Um, and you also need to map your templates to the correct folder that is on your computer. With the Electrode plugin, open, plugin opened up, you will see the vertical plugin window that shows the Trode options. Now the electrode plugin is pretty simple. There's just an option to uh, import your electrode file, which um, to be honest, I do not use. I, I use the file backstage area and import using this button right here. It's uh, is a bit quicker and doesn't take up much of my screen. When you go to the import dialog, you're going to open it up and search to wherever on your computer you've saved all of those files from the PowerShape project. Once you find it, you're going to open it up and see the electrodes that have been created. I will choose the first electrode and start the process. Right away, PowerMill goes to work, 
gives you some detail about the electrode on the left hand side and opens up the form which allows us to modify the block if your stock size is a bit different than what it originally thought but I will step it through here. There's also some analysis tools. So if you want to identify a minimum radius or a draft angle at a certain degree, and this is going to be the important page where you choose what type of strategy you want to apply to this particular electrode. As you can see, the semi finisher and finisher dialog are both filled in at a undersize of three thou and eight thou. So, when you put that into PowerShape, it carries that information forward into PowerMill. There's also an option here for some tooling. This isn't mandatory, you don't have to use this, but if you wanna import some tooling, and if you notice, I don't have anything in my tooling over here as of right now, but if I wanted to import some standard tooling, I can have it preloaded into the wizard and then have some tooling for use uh, later on if I would need to make extra tool paths. But once I choose the strategy that I want, you can see PowerMill going to work right away, creating tool paths. Once you have all of your strategies loaded in, you can simply click the finish button that will initiate the actual batch processing of these tool paths that um, calculates your safe heights and actually follows through with the calculation of these tool paths. Okay, so to have a quick look at what we have here, uh, two folders, all the tool paths in this folder are created at an undersize of 8,000, and we can see that um, in the tool path itself. There we go. And then we actually have all the finishers right here. So the finishing tool path at a negative 3,000 thickness and the semi finisher at a negative 8,000 thickness as expected. Once you're happy with the results, we can save off this project and move on to our next electrode. So the next electrode will be brought in the same way. It's also uh, important to note here that that first project we created gets saved along with the uh, electrode data. Now we'll choose that next electrode. All right. So to jump through the wizard again, take a look at our analysis tool, get right back into it, we can see that on the second one, if you remember, I removed the semi finisher value, so it's only creating a finishing uh, electrode, not multiple finish sizes. That's fine. And I will go ahead and choose that style of strategy. Okay. There we go. We have all of our tool paths as well as the tools needed for this. I will go ahead and click finish. Just like last time, PowerMill will create or set all the safe heights as well as batch process all the tool paths. There we go. So we have all of our tool paths created to complete this, this style of electrode, starting from our roughing, semi-finishing, all the way down to our 
corner finishing to get these details at the bottom. So that's the end of my demonstration showing the Autodesk Power Shape and Power Metal Electrode solution. Hopefully this opens your eyes to the tools and flexibility that are available to you within this software. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Mike. Certainly not one to disappoint and right on time, so fine job. Uh, clearly a very powerful and robust tool here. Uh, I've always enjoyed personally the direct modeling tools in PowerShape, but uh, certainly impressed with the well-roundedness of this uh, solution for pulling trodes. So that was uh, great to see. Thank you for capturing Thanks. it all. Yep. So we're now at the Q&A session over here. And I don't know that some of these questions are going to be too loaded, but uh, but I'm sure you're ready to dig into your, your bag of tricks there, Mike, to answer these. <laughs> yes. Yes, for sure. So how exactly does PowerShape save the info for PowerMill? I'm going to put a little context in this. I think um, it's it's more of a question of what happens with the data. Is there like translation in between, right? Or, you know, so. Um, yeah, so um, maybe I didn't, um, I didn't really elaborate on it too much during the demo, but when you run through that PowerShape wizard, it does create that electro electrode underscore dot trode file. Um, and that actually houses all the power mill information, including your block size, the undersized values, the actual um, CAD geometry that gets pumped into power mill. And to take it a step further, if you're actually using the power inspect solution as well, which I didn't touch on this time, um, it actually holds that power inspect data as well that can be brought into power inspect to um, do your inspection um, in a in a similar type format. Okay, thank you. Do I need PowerShape Ultimate for making these electrodes? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, so I use PowerShape Ultimate just because that's what I have. But the premium version of this software is uh, is all you need to get the electrode wizard. Very good. A uh, question just popped in here. Is there a way to do vector burning? Oh, absolutely. So vector burning is, isn't too difficult of a process. Um, that's a good question. Uh, there, there is a, a few extra steps involved. Obviously we're limited on time on a demo like this, but if anyone is interested on how to do that, I'd be happy to put together a uh, short how-to video and forward it along. And uh, as you can see, I, I think our contact info is up on the screen. Feel free to reach out to us via email or even phone call, text message, whatever works for you, and, and we'll uh, we'll get you some help. That's perfect, actually. And I, I'm glad you've got this page queued up right over here. So there's our contact details. Reach out by phone, um, email, obviously, uh, by by any means. And we do plan to follow up this webinar actually with a with a couple of segments that. I'm going to circle around back to in a moment. Uh, we do have two more questions to get to first. So okay. the next one, does PowerMill already come with templates to program my trodes? Um, oh, the PowerMill half of it. Uh, so no, there are a couple of examples um, that are within the PowerMill install file, but generally speaking, you're going to have to build your own templates simply because PowerMill doesn't know what size tooling you're using. Uh, it doesn't know what your machine capabilities are. It doesn't know what your holders are. There, there's way too many factors. So I believe there's a couple of examples. And again, if you need examples, I'd be happy to forward you on um, the ones that I built today, even if you'd like. Uh, so you do need to build the templates up front and have them structured on your computer. But once you do that work up front, it will work for you, you know, going forward um, as long as you're using the software. Okay, makes perfect sense. Does PowerShape Electrode, okay, I think this is a, a point of clarity. Um, does PowerShape Electrode allow me to utilize other tools in the software like surface edits, modeling, items like that? Absolutely. Um, so 
you're, you're not really buying PowerShape Electrode. What you're buying is PowerShape Premium, which is a full design package. Um, you can use the, the solid modeling, the solid editing, which is an amazing, easy to use tool. It works really well, as, as well as the surfacing half of it. So if you're already using PowerMill, it, it pairs very well with the software. And if you do have issues with your PowerMill projects or, or models, let's say, you can bring those, either bring them into PowerShape and make your changes or integrate it in through uh, the modeling package that PowerMill does offer. So it, it is, it is uh, giving you the full design package. Very good point of clarity there. Okay, I, I said I wanted to circle around to, to one more thing. Can you go up the next page there, Mike? And yes. I, I believe this is going to be bringing us to, uh, that's exactly it right over there. So we've, we've got an extension of these webinars here. What we plan on doing is just capturing um, some smaller segments, maybe five minute video clips, little tips and tricks, or little extensions of the webinar that maybe we didn't have quite enough time to delve into. So if you follow our YouTube channel or Perhaps uh, we'll get some of these items posted on uh, Facebook, something like this. Uh, we're going to have these little snippets, five, six, seven minute videos uh, in our zero to 360 segment. So by all means, uh, jump into YouTube. If you do a search AMS 360 Inc., uh, you should come across the channel where we're slowly starting to develop these items. So it's not a massive database yet, but we will be compiling them as we go along. Um, Mike, I've got one more question. Okay. How do we mirror the electrodes? Okay. Uh, mirroring. Um, it's, it's not a difficult, uh, it's not a difficult process at all. Um, I'd almost like to save that maybe for another segment because that could take a little bit of time to explain, but just a high level comment would be, Yes, it's possible. It's not that difficult. You don't need to redesign electrodes. There is a mirroring process within uh, PowerShape to uh, get you those mirrored electrodes. Great, glad to hear that. And that is a good idea. Maybe we can follow that up on that zero to three sec uh, 60 segment as well. So I'd say we're on, the, we're on the tail end of things over here. Uh, our, our time is looking good. We really do appreciate everybody uh, carving out uh, a piece of time right around the lunch hour to join us. Uh, we're happy to have you on the call. I hope you took something from this presentation. Um, you can reach out to us. Can you go back to the uh, contact us page one last time? Absolutely. Yep. There we and go. Again, feel free, reach out anytime, uh, phone, email, what have you, even with suggestions on, on next topics, because you know we always like to rolling up our sleeves and getting into the, the next order of business, right? Yeah, that's absolutely a, that's a, that's a great suggestion, Rob. Uh, the questions that you guys have are probably what we should be covering, um, not just what we think is best, because we might be maybe a little off point on our suggestions. Wonderful. And thanks again to Aaron for monitoring the questions, uh, moderating things in the background, helping get in th uh, getting things organized, mentorship, partnership, and everything. Uh, you know, it's just great to be uh, part of the larger team. Really enjoy it. So Great to be involved, guys. Wonderful. Thank you all very much again, and uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Thank you.